And I'd like to welcome now City Capital Chairman and CEO Yu Chen Zhang. Thank you very much for your time today. Well, thank you, Sherry, for having me on. So we have seen this recovery take hold in Asia, but we're also seeing intermittent outbreaks of infections. What's the investment outlook across the region for you? Uh, Asia is bouncing back nicely, you know, particularly East uh, Asia. Uh, and uh, uh, we see a lot of opportunities as uh, China emerged from the pandemic first. Uh, so, you know, many sectors such as uh, healthcare, technology, and consumption are the major focus for most of the uh, private equity investors and uh, for us uh, as well. And yet we are seeing some signs of weakness across China as well, such as the clampdown on certain sectors of the economy, uh, perhaps some liquidity tightening as well. How does this impact your investment outlook when you're trying to decide where you can find opportunities? Well, for private equity investors, you know, too much liquidity may not actually be a good thing. You know, the, the fact that the Chinese government is taking proactive uh, uh, initiatives in curtailing uh, the uh, flood of liquidity is around the world uh, and as a, a sort of a preemptive uh, measure, um, I, I think actually bodes well for the long-term potential of the uh, Chinese economy. Uh, as for the crackdown the, on some of the anti-competitive uh, uh, practices, which were, you know, fairly, uh, you know, rampant, it's, it's time to uh, curtailing some of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the anti-competitive uh, monopolistic type of, uh, uh, you know, behavior. And uh, I think all of that, in a year when you already see, you know, the Chinese economy growing 18.3% uh, in the first quarter, uh, it's actually a good thing that because the, the Chinese government does want the economy to overheat. So this is maybe the time to actually, uh, you know, take care of some longer term issues by, you know, doing the clampdown. But it's not just the tech sector where we're seeing the clampdown, right? We have seen it in other sectors as well. Private education has been one of them. And this has been one of those places where foreign investors have really looked at and have found opportunities. What's your take on that? Well, the, uh, um, the private, I mean, Chinese uh, love education and they devote uh, so much of the family resources to education. Education uh, is a way of social mobility and is a system that the Chinese people believe in for you know, 2,000 years. And, and so this is almost sort of like a religion. So when you have a college entrance examination system that, that's you know, predicated on one exam once a year, and so people naturally will try to go to cram schools and, and, and they try to uh, get ahead of the others and then having some sort of a head start. But unfortunately, this is a, a arms race and, and everybody is doing that. I think at some point the government needs to, uh, you know, crack down and, and uh, you know, d d d roll it back a little bit and that's what's happening. Because when you have the, some of the leading online education, uh, you know, companies actually becoming the uh, the top advertisers um, in, in on CCTV. You know, it's the equivalent of uh, uh, being the top advertiser doing Super Bowl but, in the U.S. You have an I issue. Guess, that means you know this is probably too much uh, uh, of that is going on. But I guess the concern is: Will big funds that have raised tons of money in the last couple of years will they get burned badly? Well, some, uh, I'm sure some of them are burned already. Uh, you know, I, I think, but it doesn't, I mean, a lot of, uh, you know, for example, we didn't go into it. Uh, some of it, I think it may be just common sense. You know, uh, too much of a good thing may not be good. So, you know, it, it, when, when they are, when these online education companies are spending money like crazy, 
and that believing there's always money behind them, um, I, I don't think is sustainable. So uh, tell us about your investment focus, because you've been sharpening your focus on certain sectors in order to differentiate yourself. Give us an update of that strategy. Well, we have always focused on consumption. Uh, as you know, we control McDonald's China, which is doing extremely well. We uh, have also focused on healthcare, which is a major growth area in China. Uh, there's a lot of demand as people getting you know, wealthier and want to live longer. And then last but not least in the technology sector, as the tension between US and China uh, build up and, 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 and looking and likely to recede anytime soon, there is clearly a technological decoupling uh, which benefits the tech, tech sector in China. So that's, uh, you know, by and large, that's what we're focusing on. Do you believe that this technological decoupling will not result in the isolation of some of these Chinese firms? In fact, that, as you're saying, will actually lead to more growth. Well, I mean, China is a, a huge market. It's probably in, in you know in a couple of year time it will be the largest market in the world, and uh, uh, so there's pl plenty of room to grow for tech companies. So you know, at the same time, China is not shutting itself off. Uh, in fact, it's opening up more. You know, for example, in financial sector, service sector, and all that. So there's plenty of uh, uh, communication. Uh, exchange with outside, which will benefit, you know, the tech sector, you know, in China and in the world as well.